<laughs> well, that's good to hear. Um, continuing kind of the conversation of, uh, you know, alternative energy, I want to kind of segue into uh, something that we're kind of seeing in Texas right now. Um, it right. looks like they're having, you know, some summertime grid issues. Um, and ERCOT, the state's power grid operator, has asked Texans uh, to turn up their thermostats and postpone running major appliances between 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. Um, again, this is step one of a plan that if and if this is unsuccessful, step two is going to follow with rolling blackouts. Um, you know, power grids, they got to uh, keep supply and demand in balance at all times. Uh, and due to low daytime winds and high summer heat, the grid is struggling to keep up. Yep. And I think this is a great example of where, you know, energy storage solutions, which we've talked about before, mm -hmm. could really shine. Um, yep. Can you explain some of the different energy storage solutions that exist or are being developed today and how they address this and uh, other problems of the future that we can encounter when it comes to uh, energy storage? Right. So the grid needs to be modernized. The energy grid needs to be modernized. It needs to be reimagined. It needs to be reconstructed for a modern society. Um, the rolling blackout, I live in California. Uh, we've had rolling mm -hmm. blackouts before. Um, it's not uncommon here. It's not uncommon in Texas. It's not uncommon in a lot of places where energy usage can be high, uh, whether because of the weather conditions or the amount of people in a certain area. Uh, the grid is just not sustainable. Um, and it needs to become mm -hmm. sustainable. The way we do that is through decarbonization. We produce a lot of solar power, we produce a lot of wind power, and we pump that to all the homes, all the buildings, all the offices, all the properties in, in a certain area. The problem therein, of course, as everybody knows, with decarbonization and with clean energy technologies is they're intermittent. They don't last forever. Um, and the wind mm -hmm. doesn't shine every day. The sun or the sun doesn't shine every day. The wind doesn't blow every day. So we need to back up that energy with energy storage technologies. So that's why we mm -hmm. think that energy storage technologies are going to be a very critical component of this whole decarbonization movement as we go towards clean energies. Uh, it's going to be solar panels, it's going to be wind turbines, it's going to be hydrogen electrolyzers, and it's going to be energy storage systems. Now, the really exciting thing about energy storage systems is that at the end of 2020, there are only like 25 gigawatt hours of energy storage systems installed globally. And that represents mm -hmm. less than 1% of all clean energy production capacity. So okay. we're saying that in order for the grid to be truly decarbonize in order for the world mm -hmm. to truly be run by clean energy you need a lot of energy storage most experts say that in order to have this sustainable clean energy world we need maybe 30 35 percent of all clean energy production to be backed by energy storage systems today we're at less than one percent mm -hmm. So there are two growth vectors for the energy storage category. One is that yeah. share expansion from less than 1% to 30% plus of clean energy being backed by energy storage systems. The second growth vector is that that whole pie is growing. The clean energy pie is growing. So you have yeah. these two growth vectors working together that are going to power tremendous growth in the energy storage industry over the next 5, 10, 15, 20, even 30 plus years. And our modeling suggests actually that the energy storage system uh, industry can grow from what was about 25 gigawatt hours at the end of 2020 to about 800 mm -hmm. gigawatt hours by 2030. And Bloomberg New Energy Finance okay. actually agrees with that. They're calling for 800 gigawatt hours of energy storage uh, installed capacity by 2030. So that means this is an industry that is set to grow 30 fold in the 2020s, 30 fold. Mm -hmm. So this is, we're talking huge growth with energy storage. So that's kind of the backdrop for why we really like energy storage systems. Now, when you get into the energy storage category, you have to understand that there are different technologies, different ways to store energy. Most of them are through mm -hmm. batteries. Some of them are through like gravity based solutions. But um, on the battery mm -hmm. front, you have kind of three major uh, options. The first mm -hmm. are lithium ion batteries and lithium ion batteries mm -hmm. are talking just the stuff that's in electric vehicles, the stuff that's in your iPhone, the stuff that powers electronics today. So the reason mm -hmm. we would do that is because the science around lithium ion batteries is very well understood. Uh, we know how to make mm -hmm. them. They're benefiting from economies of scale. So they're getting pretty cheap um, and they're exceptionally mm -hmm. energy dense. 
So there's there are a lot of pluses to lithium ion batteries as an energy storage solution. Now, the downsides of lithium ion batteries uh, at, for ESS are that one, they don't last very long. Their mm-hmm. ideal time is four hours of storage. They can, with improved science, get up to 10 hours of storage. Maybe they can go to 10 to 15, but that seems unlikely. It looks what looks what is going to be the most likely is that lithium ion uh, battery energy storage systems can only store energy effectively up to 10 hours, which works mm-hmm. in a lot of scenarios, but it doesn't work when the sun doesn't shine for several days in a row or the wind doesn't blow for several days in a row or there's some natural disaster and and we really can't access any energy for a certain amount of time beyond 10 hours so that 10 hour storage works in most use cases but not in all use cases so that's why there's been other um, sciences uh, other chemistries deployed to address the energy storage problem some of the other ones include iron flow batteries which are really interesting Mm -hmm. so lithium ion batteries are all about condensing the battery and making it as small as possible as compact as possible iron flow batteries Mm -hmm. actually kind of they decouple the cathode and the anode and they in, in so doing they decouple the power and the charge and i let me mm-hmm. i actually have a cool picture to show you about how sure, iron yeah. flow batteries work so let me pull that up for you real quick like do 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 sorry guys <laughs> no, we love we love the charts. We love the pictures. It helps everything. Good, 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 good. All right, let's do a little screen sharing here, shall we? Mm-hmm. Where's my screen share button? Screen share. Okay, so these are. Can you see it, Aaron? Yep, I can see it. All right, so these these are iron flow batteries, and they're really interesting. So you can see here's the anode but it's actually a liquid uh, mm-hmm. and, 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 and analyte tank and here, here's the catholite tank so they separate the two and mm-hmm. why that's really interesting is because it decouples the power and energy of the system right mm-hmm. so lithium ion batteries they're all about being small mm-hmm. and so the electrolyte um we want to condense the electrolyte between the cathode and the anode but um iron flow batteries instead of just kind of slapping the electrolyte between the cathode and the anode Mm -hmm. they separate out the electrolyte as you can see here that's the separation Mm -hmm. happening okay they separate out the electrolyte into separate tanks of water okay now in doing that what happens is iron flow batteries they decouple the 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 power and the energy of the battery Mm -hmm. so what you can do is you can make these very economically scalable you can increase the power without increasing the energy you can increase energy without increasing the power whereas with lithium ion battery because they're together if you want to have a battery that has more power you need more energy and you make the battery bigger that's mm-hmm. not the case here Got so it. that makes them a very interesting solution for uh energy storage systems now mm-hmm. the science here is much less well understood mm-hmm. than it is with other um with lithium ion batteries for example mm-hmm. but there are there's a lot of progress being made here there's a lot of potential um early results are very promising so i think that iron flow batteries have a niche to fill in that sort of 10 plus hours of storage um market Mm -hmm. another one that people are working on are metal air batteries and Mm -hmm. those essentially use uh the oxidation of rust and it's not it's the most promising yet the most underdeveloped today. And so mm-hmm. I don't think it's worth really talking about here and now, maybe in five sure. years it'll be worth talking about. But right now, I think it's all about lithium ion and iron flow batteries. There are also other types of energy storage systems out there, gravity based ones that basically you build giant cranes that lower and drop blocks mm-hmm. uh, or lower and raise blocks to, to store and use energy. They use mm-hmm. mine shafts. So those are interesting, but I think economically don't make much sense. So. Mm-hmm. When it comes to the energy storage system, I see this market growing by 30 fold over the next 
several years. Mm -hmm. And in that market, I see lithium ion batteries being the biggest growth vector powered by all energy storage needs of 10 hours or less and Mm -hmm. iron flow dominating that 10 plus hour range. So that's how I see the energy storage market kind of breaking down. And when I'm Mm -hmm. looking for investment opportunities in ESS, I'm looking for either leading lithium ion battery energy storage players Mm -hmm. or leading iron flow uh, battery energy storage players. Those are the two investment opportunities I'm targeting in ESS today. Now, looking even just a little further in the future, as energy storage does become uh, more for the consumer, uh, is there a scenario where energy storage just that we're the scenario that we're seeing in Texas with the grid, where we just don't ha- even have a use for the grid, where we can just have a battery, we take in the solar, it stores that energy for in a, the most efficient, best way possible, where we don't have to worry about uh, tapping into the grid ever again. Is that a scenario that you see, like not even 30, but maybe 60 years down the line? I, entirely so. And that mm-hmm. that would be a lithium ion um, battery energy storage system at your house. So you would have solar mm-hmm. panels on your roof. You would have a Tesla power wall or some mm-hmm. other um, at home battery energy storage solution attached to the side of your house or in your garage. You would generate the solar power on really sunny days. You would save excess. You would use some of that that day. You would save excess in that battery energy storage wall or uh, system. And then on days where it's not that sunny, you would deploy that excess energy to your house and you would have this kind of self-sustaining energy loop, if you will. Mm-hmm. So I do think that is that is the neighborhood of the future. That is the home of the future. I think every mm-hmm. home will be out like that. Retrofitting homes to be um, energy uh, self-sustaining uh, like that is going to be very expensive and very difficult and a long mm-hmm. undertaking so that this is not something that i see becoming ubiquity anytime soon but rather yeah. what i do see is that new construction mm-hmm. will be made to be this to have solar panels to have energy storage walls and that over time it will become ubiquity but it, it's going mm-hmm. to take time to get to that point Thanks for watching HGI Clips. For the full episode, head on over to our sister channel at Hypergrowth Investing by clicking the link in the description or listen to the podcast on any of your favorite streaming platforms. We make new episodes every Wednesday, so make sure to check it out and subscribe to never miss any of Luke's Hypergrowth Insights.